So this is gonna be a short little video about plyometrics, what constitutes as plyometrics and what does not. Now I don't wanna sound arrogant here, but inevitably I will be perceived that way after I say this, but if you open another YouTube tab right now and type in plyometric workout or just plyometrics, I am willing to bet you're gonna come across several videos where you have some traditional group training instructor with the microphone instructing people like approaching the plyometric workout like it's some kind of a Zumba or cardio workout and that is just catastrophic. That goes against everything plyometrics stands for. Now the pioneer of plyometrics was the Russian Yuri Verhoshansky and I apologize for my Russian friends if I pronounce that catastrophically but anyways. The, his main thesis was that when you do any jumping motion, let's say you're just gonna jump, a, ver a regular vertical jump, or you stand on a box and jump down on the ground, what happens then? Your body, it absorbs this force from the ground, okay? And this force, you wanna jump immediately upon contact so that you can utilize the stored elastic energy in your body. If you wait for too long, this elastic energy is gonna be lost as heat. And that is a big no-no. And this is why in plyometrics, immediately upon contact, you want to jump again to utilize this. This is why in sprinting, when people sprint, they try to spend as little time on the ground as possible. Very brief contact times. Because this allows you to utilize this elastic energy. And this phenomenon, if you will, is called the stretch shortening cycle. So it's basically a very quick transition from concentric to eccentric contraction. And not only this, it is not only about elastic energy, it's also about the intention of the movement. For any plyometric exercise to be effective, you need to do with each repetition, not only with short contact times, but also explosive and powerful intentions. As fast and powerful as you can, each repetition. And this is the problem with a lot of content out there, they don't stress this point enough. You need to do them with effort, mental effort. And now I'm gonna show you a little clip about how real plyometrics look like. This man that you're observing right here is the Swiss shot putter named Gunther Werner. He was walking around in a body weight of I believe 130 to 140 kilograms, okay? So keep that in mind while you're watching this. It's a multiple world champion, Olympic bronze medalist. Look at how he moves. He puts 100% effort in each and every one of the reps and he flies like Superman when he does those few repetitions of the plyometric exercises, like the box jumps, the hurdle jumps, all of those. Look at this. This is a man of a body weight of 130 to 140 kilograms. He just flies. This is real plyometrics. Putting a thousand percent effort on each and every one of those repetitions. When you do those kind of workouts, like the plyometric and explosive kind of workouts, I want you to forget everything about the way you approach cardio training or even the way you approach strength training. This is a very neural type of training. It all begins in the brain. You have to understand that a powerful action, it starts with a thought, okay? When you, when you intend to do something explosively, your brain, it sends motor neurons to your muscles from the central nervous system. It travels from the spinal cord into your muscles. And that is one motor neuron. But to perform an action powerfully, you want to recruit as many as you can, so it starts with a thought. You need to think of power training like this. Think of it as a think of it as if you're if you were running five kilometers, a cardio low effort workout, but you condense all of that energy into just one moment. Like it condenses into like a black hole in space, and you release it into one repetition. That is what that is what power training is about, especially plyometric training, which is a subcategory of power training. So you have to put a thousand percent effort into those few repetitions to teach your brain to produce those powerful movements at will. That is real plyometrics. Real plyometrics is not approached like a cardio workout in a group training class that you see everywhere on the internet. That is not plyometrics. Real plyometrics is few repetitions, quality over quantity, 100% mental effort and short contact times to utilize elastic energy. That is plyometrics. And the kind, of, the kind of fatigue you experience after a plyometric workout is not comparable to a strength training workout or a 10 kilometer run. 
the fatigue you feel, it's not always muscular. It's mostly in the brain. You get tired in the brain because you have to put forth those a lot of effort in a very short amount of time. So it's almost like you've been, you're studying for a test and you've been studying for 10 hours. You get tired in the head, right? It's a similar feeling to that if you do plyometrics correctly. It's very neural. It's, you get a mental fatigue from it. It's not the same kind of like muscular soreness after a heavy squat day or something like that. It's very neural. So as you keep studying this training method of plyometrics, you're going to come across a million of different exercise variations like the depth jump, the hurdle jump, the box jump, the drop jump. But whichever one you choose, the key takeaway from this video is this. Do them with powerful intentions, with max effort, like you saw the Swiss gentleman here, Gunther Werner, the world medalist shot putter. That is a textbook example.